Hey, it's Saoirse, and today it's raining. I got a comment from someone that they liked the video I did where it was raining. It was kind of relaxing. And I want to have that chill vibe in my videos, so hopefully you guys can hear me and it's not too distracting, but it's a really nice stormy day today. And I'm coming at you with Stan Cliffs Hotel by Charlotte Bronte. It's a really tiny little book. And I got this in France, actually. So when I worked in Paris three years ago, I checked out Shakespeare and Company. Excuse me, baby. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Um, Shakespeare and Company is a, an English language bookstore in Paris. It's right in view of Notre Dame. And they stamp their books with their little company logo. And I just think that's really special, like, you look at that and you remember where you were, and the sights and sounds of Paris. So anyway, this is, I guess you could call it a novella. Um, I'll read you the little bit in here that explains, like, what is this tiny little book. It says it was part of the Angrian saga that Charlotte Bronte created in her adolescence and early twenties with her younger brother Branwell. Together they imagined the rich and dramatic world of Angria, ruled over by the dashing Duke of Zamorna. He is married to Mary Percy, whose father, the Lord of Northangerland, has recently led an unsuccessful rebellion against his son-in-law. Stancliffe's Hotel, which Charlotte wrote in 1838, takes place after the rebellion has been crushed, when tensions are still running high in Zamorna City. So. I put off reading this for three years because I was just thinking, oh, it's part of something bigger, I'm not going to understand it. Um, I would rather read like the whole Angrene saga um, to get the whole picture. Um, and that goes along with how I have an issue with reading like one book from a series, like just the first book. I won't start a series until... I know that I've got all this time set aside where I can read the entire series in one go because otherwise I just get stressed about like I'm going to forget things and then I'll have to go back whatever whatever like when Harry Potter was coming out when I was growing up I think I reread the books every time a new one came out so when the fourth one came out I'd read the first second and third right before <laughs> so yeah I don't do a lot of uh, book series anymore um, so yeah, I just thought this would be confusing, whatever. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I should have had more faith in my favorite writer. Because though there isn't like a huge plot in this tiny little book, it's, it's, let's see, 100, 111 pages. Very short. And like, short little pages. It's a small copy. Um, so it did not take me long to read. And the... The great thing about Charlotte, and this is going to be just uh, me talking about how great Charlotte is video, slash also reading some stuff from this. The great thing about her is she just pulls you in right away. Like, people think Victorian literature is so stuffy, it's the language is so different, you know, it's not, it's not readable anymore, and it's certainly not enjoyable. She makes me laugh, and she makes me just, like, I had to stop so many times while reading this short little thing and go, I just had to go, you're kidding me. Like, you're kidding me. What, how is she so good? She's, even if I had no clue what was going on, which I kind of didn't really, because yeah, it's part of something bigger. Even, it didn't matter. Like, it's a bunch of people having conversations about stuff that I don't understand, and I don't care because it's so well written. It's just beautiful. Her, her way with words, is something that I've never seen before. I've never seen in another author. It's I've seen people try to replicate her style of writing. Um, and we'll get to a, a book I read last month, which was trying to be, like, it was trying to be Victorian literature, but it's modern. And yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. But you really just can't top this. Um, I get really worked up about Charlotte. See, I've got my Bronte shirt on. One of one of them. I have a few. Um, 
Can you tell how, like, speechless I get? I can't, like, I can't form sentences when I'm talking about Charlotte. Okay. So why don't I just read you some of her sentences, because they're ridiculous. Um, so these are just, like, random sentences and mostly descriptions of nature. And the thing that, that fascinates me about her is that she used so much description. Her books, her actual, like, full-length books, are very long. And, you know, in years since the 19th century, people came along and said, well, we have to write shorter sentences. Everything has to be this clipped pace, like Ernest Hemingway type, you know? saying more by saying less, but I think she can say quite a lot and still not take away any of the power of those words. You know, I've heard that in people telling me about writing, like you, if you say more, your words are going to be less impactful, but I think Charlotte is the prime example of how that is just not true in every case. It is true in some cases, but not with her. Okay. I felt myself on the brink of some hideous disaster, and a vague influence ever and anon pushed me over, till clinging wildly to life and reason, I almost lost consciousness in the faintness of mortal terror. Pretty simple. But, like, describes exactly the way that I have felt a lot. Come here, kitty. There she goes. Um, this feeling that like something's coming. I've always felt like I'm on the edge of this this catastrophic event, and I don't know what it is, and I don't know how to stop it. Um, and she just kind of put that sentence in there and explained everything. Caddy, please, please. I don't know why she's like. She just wants to sit exactly in front of the camera, even though there's so much room everywhere else in here. But she has to sit right there. Okay. Um, my mother's calling me. I, I chose a really good time to make a video here, and because I can't edit videos, I have to just... <laughs> I have to do stuff while I'm filming. Sorry. Okay. Next one. And this is short. I'm not going to read too many, but it, what amazed me was that I... Um, I picked more quotes in here than I did in some books that are five times as long. If something doesn't stand out, stand out to me, then I'm just, I don't know, I'm not impressed with most people's writing. She's really kind of spoiled me. Because <laughs> now I expect so much more from writers. Okay, I love this description. Now in remote woods, the chimneys of Gurnington Hall sent out their blue smoke to give token that the old spot was peopled again. In remoter meads, the broad sashes of Summerfield House were thrown up to admit the gale sweeping over those wide prairies into rooms with mirrors cleared and carpets spread and couches unswathed in Holland. Every blind was withdrawn at Stuartville Park. Every shutter opened, and the windows through crimson curtains looked boldly towards the green ascent where Edwardston smiles upon its young plantations. The rooks were cawing at Warner Hall with cheerier sound than ever, as early on a Sunday, Sunday, summer morning, the Prime Minister of Angria, standing on his front doorsteps, looked at the sun rising over his still grounds in deep woods and over the long, dark moors of Howard. And my reading of this is not doing it any justice, and that's frustrating. It's... Like, I normally, I'll tell you, I normally don't like a lot of description, and I don't tend to write a lot of description. And when most people do it, I will just kind of skim through, like, okay, okay, you're in nature, let's get to the next part, what's gonna happen? But with Charlotte, it's her poetic way of describing even the most, what we would think of as boring things, that makes her so delightful to read. Um, and it's not like, it doesn't feel like light and airy to me, like her words have a much stronger impact. And... I don't know. I'm not going to start comparing to Jane Austen because I have not read all of Jane Austen yet. I have only read Emma and Sense and Sensibility. So I won't go there yet, but from what I've read, you know, people compare them a lot. They didn't even 
live in the same time. But Charlotte is just a little bit more passionate and I heard, like they're both witty, but I don't know, their humor is very different. Um, so I don't really love them being compared or people saying that they like Jane over Charlotte. They're just different writers. I don't know. Okay, on this one, so that's like how she, she describes nature. Like here she describes people. And this is, I just love this. We were both young, both thin, both sallow and light-haired and blue-eyed, both carefully and somewhat foppishly dressed, with small feet set off by a slender chaussure and white hands garnished with massive rings. My friend, however, was considerably taller than I, and had besides more of the air military. His head was differently set upon his shoulders. He had incipient light brown mustaches and some growth of whisker. He threw out his chest, too, and sported a length of limb terminating in boot and spur. His complexion, originally fair almost to delicacy, appeared to have seen service, for it was like my own, much tanned, freckled, and yellowed to a bilious hue with the sun. He wore a blue dress coat with velvet collar, velvet waistcoat, and charming white tights. I endued a well-made green frock and light summer jeans. Now, reader, have you got us before you? I love the way she addresses the audience. And like, she does all these things that now you know, modern writing teachers would tell you, don't do that, don't address the audience. And don't write so much description about how somebody looks, let the reader picture them. I don't believe in that. I really, just in every case, I don't believe in that. Um, I love how she is like, well, I just laid it out for you, now can you see us? Are you picturing what I just told you? She's just sassy and smart, and I love her. Okay, let's see. Here comes another cat. I know what he's about to do. He's gonna walk right in front of us. Do it. Come on. It's raining. I know they want to stare at the rain. Okay. Zamorna was all astir. Half her population seemed poured out into the wide new streets. Not a trace remained of last night's storm. Summer was raining with ardor in the perfectly still air and unclouded sunshine. Come on, buddy. Ladies in white dresses flitted along the streets and crowded the magnificent and busy shops. Before us rose the new minster, lifting its beautiful front and rich fretted pinnacles, almost as radiant as marble, against a sky of southern purity. Just the words she chooses to use, like, there's so many times people say just overused phrases like, a beautiful sunset, blah blah blah, describe the colors, whatever, but the way she says, radiant as marble against a sky of southern purity, excuse me, excuse me, description I've never heard before, she just says stuff that like, other people didn't. They didn't use that way of describing things. Okay, what am I doing here? Where did I get that number? Oh, I think I meant this one. Okay. Immediately before us, the Valley of the Olympian opened broad and free. The road with gentle descent wound white as milk down among the rich pastures and waving woods of the vale. My heart expanded as I looked at the path we were to tread edging the feet of the gentle hills whose long sweeps has subsided to level on the banks of the river, the glorious river, bright, brightly flowing in broad, quiet waves and with a sound of remote seas through scenery as green as Eden. We were almost at the gates of Hartford Park. The house was visible far away among its sunny grounds and its beech woods extending to the road, lifted high above the causeway a silver shade. This was not a scene of solitude. Carriages smoothly rolled past us every five minutes, and stately cavaliers galloped by on their noble chargers. Hmm. Anytime somebody uses milk as a description for something, I'm here for it. The road with gentle descent wound white as milk down among the rich pastures and waving woods of the vale. Ugh. Ugh. If nobody else is as excited as I am, I understand, but I'm having a good time. Although it's very hot in here, and I don't understand that because it really shouldn't be so hot. It's like I have the air conditioning on. It's just always hot. Welcome to summer. It's here. It's only going to get worse. 
Get me out of Florida. Okay. I don't know what I'm looking at. We enter here, said Percy, pausing at a green gate which opened sweetly beneath an arch of laburnums upon a lawn like velvet. A white-walled villa stood before us, bosomed in a blooming shrubbery. With green walks between the rose trees and a broad carriage road winding through all to the door. I think I'll stop there. I just love a lawn like velvet. Ugh, she keeps using these like decadent descriptions of nature. And you gotta think about where Charlotte lived, where she spent her whole life, almost her whole life, aside from, you know, living in a few other places, but mostly in, in the Yorkshire Moors. And they were such a central figure in her life and her sister's lives that that, that constant exploring in nature and, and looking at nature really comes out in everything she writes. It's so beautiful. Okay, last one. I have a, there's a dog here who I'm dog sitting. And um, he really wants to be part of this. Hi. Yeah. He's a cute little guy. Um, it was still evening. A heaven unclouded smiled to the ascent of a moon undimmed. That summer day was gone, and while the burning west closed its gates upon her departure, softer paths opened in the east for the steps of a mild summer night. Oh, that's one that made me stop. A heaven unclouded smiled to the ascent of a moon undimmed. Ah! Another thing she does is that um, she uses adjectives and adverbs and throws them around as much as she pleases and it's not excessive and it's not it doesn't take away from anything it just she I can just picture her like picking out a very specific word after I don't know maybe she was such a genius that it just came to her right away or she really tailored each sentence carefully and she knew exactly what she was doing with those words either way I mean Incredible talent. Um, so yeah, pick up, please, pick up something. I can't even speak. I'm too excited. Pick up something by Charlotte Bronte. If you have not read her before, um, pick up all of the Brontes because it's all worth it. Um, but yeah, she is my favorite of the sisters. And um, I will leave a link for you um, to a blog post that I wrote about uh, the time that I went to Haworth where the Brontes lived and they their house is still there it's the Bronte Parsonage Museum now so you can go in and you can see all the rooms that they lived in and worked in um, you can see where the sisters wrote um, it's a really transcendent experience and right in front of the house is the church where they're all buried, the whole family, except for Anne, who's buried in Scarborough. Um, and then, you know, right beyond the house, you've got the moors, and it's just incredible. I can't think of <laughs> words. <laughs> uh, she just wrote the most beautiful words, and here I am trying to talk about them, and I'm saying stuff like incredible. Oh, what a disappointment. But, yeah, so if you have a chance, if you ever have a chance to visit Haworth, do it. Don't pass it up. It's really a pilgrimage. Um, and if anybody wants to talk to me about the Brontes, if you're into them too, or if you want advice on where to start, uh, I don't get tired of talking about them. So I think, let's see, I, maybe I'll just cover a couple things that are going on in my life. <laughs> Hi. Um... I got LASIK surgery on my eyeballs so I can see and it's it's super weird because I don't have to get up and put on glasses or contacts every single day. I'm just like waking up and seeing. It's the most bizarre feeling. Uh, it's so freeing after years of contacts and glasses. Um, but it's like freaky too. Like Sometimes I get really paranoid like are my eyes working right? 
you know, I'm already kind of a hypochondriac, so I'm, I always worry about everything, so now I'm just worried about my eyes possibly having bad effects, but it's been fine for the most part. I think they're healing really well, and the surgery was so fast, um, it was kind of like an out-of-body experience, and it was like the most sci-fi thing I've ever seen. It was nuts. Just crazy what they can do. Um, so yeah, I got LASIK and then I went to Mexico City last week. I know I mentioned I was going. It was awesome. There's, there's a great word for you. It was awesome. Yeah, I'll try to write something soon. I mean, I have so much to say about it, so like there will be a blog post, but it will take a little while. Um, because I also have pictures coming from my camera, my GoPro, and my phone, and so... And my computer has no space to upload them all. Isn't that fun? So I've got to figure out how I'm going to get the pictures for the blog post. But anyway, Mexico was amazing. I... I saw so much, and... Really, like, after the first day of, like, adjustment, and, um, altitude sickness, and culture shock, after that I really got into it, and, um just enjoyed exploring my surroundings and now I'm back and I already can't wait to travel again and I miss Mexico City um, but my next adventure is a hiking adventure so I'll be hiking the long trail in Vermont uh, in a few weeks so let me know I don't know I've been thinking about it like would people be super opposed if I talked about things other than books, I mean, I can always relate a, a subject back to a book, or b books in general. Um, but if I talked about anything else that I do in my life, would anybody be interested? I, I really don't want to make a second YouTube channel that's excessive, um, considering I already have three <laughs> Instagram accounts. Um, so if you guys want me to just like keep that stuff to Instagram and not talk about it here, that's cool, but... Also, this is my channel, and I'm probably just going to talk about whatever I want, and you can follow me or you can unfollow me. But I really appreciate those of you who are sticking around and enjoying talking about books with me. Let's keep it going. I'll see you next time. Bye.